What's up everyone, Darblade here with another episode in my series of Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guides. Today we are going to be talking about one of maybe my underappreciated classes, the Quarian Engineer. The class is a lot better than I initially thought it was going to be, and after spending a good deal of time playing the class, I'm glad to see that my stereotyping of the class initially before playing it is completely wrong. <laughs> I do enjoy this class. Now as always, the way I spec my characters is for silver or gold mode. And the Quarian Engineer can fulfill a great supporting role for either of these two difficulties. Now the way I spec my Quarian Engineer is fully max out your sentry turret. I spec it specifically for flamethrower as my cryoblast increases flame damage to the target. Armor piercing ammo because it increases more damage for the turret. And damage and shields which is... Well, pretty obvious what that does. <laughs> I max out Incinerate. I max it out mainly to increase damage against chilled targets, so it works in combination with Cryoblast. I also make it that it does a high damage over time effect. I also increase the actual initial damage of the Incinerate, making it a hard hitting power move rather than a quick one. Now, I spec into Cryoblast, fully maxing it out. I make it so Chilled targets and frozen targets take more fire damage. I make it that the impact radius is more as well. As for Quarian Defender and Fitness, these again are personal preference. If you wanted to fill out Fitness, for example, you can maybe reduce a few points in Incinerate or the Sentry Turret, but it's up to you. For my weapon, I normally like to go with a good assault rifle or a good strong pistol. Preference is down to purely the player in this case, I feel. So anyway, the first major ability that the Quarian Engineer has is Sentry Turret. This is a small little turret spawned from the Engineer. It's thrown out pretty similar to how grenades are thrown, and where it lands, the turret will spawn. Throwing it into key locations and key choke points is a great tactic for this Sentry Turret. The turret will, of course, continue to shoot anyone close by. It can uh, draw attention, but it is not as effective as the Solarian's decoy. You can spec the turret to do various types of damage. Like I said, I spec mine to do flame damage in the form of a flamethrower. This is because the flamethrower can activate the cryo-explosion combo. Once you've frozen someone with cryoblast close to the turret, the flamethrower can actually activate the cryoblast. The other ways you spec your turret can also activate combos, but I feel this is the best one for the Quarian Engineer. This basically means that if the sentry turret, the flame sentry turret, is near a frozen target and the turret actually kills them, the target will explode, freezing or chilling anyone else around them as they die. The sentry turret also works wonders on smaller levels. The flamethrower turret in particular works really well on the small enclosed levels. If, you're, if you prefer to play on the larger maps with more open gaps with more sniper areas then maybe not spec into the flamethrower and instead go for one of the other types of ammunition you can get with the sentry turret. Now I'm going to talk about the other two abilities that the Quarian engineer has in unison because these two abilities incinerate and cryoblast work in an amazing combination for this class being able to freeze someone or chill someone and follow it up with a incinerate is really key to success with this class i find specking your cryoblast like i mentioned before into frozen vulnerability means that your incinerate is going to be doing so much high damage to frozen and chilled targets. Cryoblast also works against pretty much all enemy types as well. If it doesn't freeze them, it will definitely chill them, which still puts the debuff of taking more fire damage from Incinerate and your flame turret. I should also mention frozen targets who die from your Incinerate will explode, freezing and chilling everyone around them. Now you can flip this around as well by in throwing incinerate at someone and killing them with cryoblast, making a flame explosion happen instead. But this, I feel, is not as effective as the cryo explosion. 
Making cryoblast a bigger impact radius as well means that you're going to AOE, area of effect, everyone who gets within range of your cryoblast's intended target. This is great as it can create a chain effect almost by freezing the targets or chilling them, following up by a good incinerate blast and weapon fire. This is a great rotation for the Quarian Engineer. And as long as you haven't weighed yourself down with too much weaponry, this should work wonders for anyone who wants to learn how to play the Quarian Engineer well. As you can see here in this upcoming clip is an example of the cryo explosions I've been going on about and how well cryoblast and incinerate work so well together to create chains of incapacitated enemies and enemies who have a debuff will take more damage from yourself and your teammates. One thing I would like to say about the incinerate ability, I expect it so it does a large damage over time effect after hitting the target. This can be great on frozen targets. For example, you freeze someone or chill someone, hit them with incinerate, then you can go off and do something else because the damage over time, the dot on them will eventually kill them, especially on silver. On gold, it might take a bit more attention, but on silver, a frozen target and one incinerate with the spec I have will kill someone in time if it doesn't do it outright. <laughs> now the Quarian Engineer is an alien race again. It's not the same as the humans out there and functions a little bit differently. Instead of having a roll that can go sideways, she does a little hop. <laughs> I don't think it's quite as effective as the human roll, but the time in between hopping is not as long as when you are rolling as a human. She can still roll forward and roll backwards. Her melees are pretty much the same as the humans. These are only the real differences. So the Quarians function very similar to humans. There's only a few minor differences, like I said, but in the bigger scheme of things, they're not too different at all. At the start of the video, I mentioned that the Quarian Engineer was a very good supporting role. And this is how I feel, because they are not really frontline fighters. They're excellent at slowing down the enemy's advance, trapping and freezing targets, putting up diversions with their sentry turrets, and generally supporting your team's role at taking down enemies. If you have a teammate who has incinerate, that's great. It means you can fire out cryoblast more often rather than having to resort to cryoblast followed by incinerate. If you have a teammate that likes to use overload, then all of your abilities, except for the sentry turret, can be used to activate their tech burst combinations. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the Quarian Engineer has a lot of abilities and powers at her disposal that can help the team. <laughs> so let's summarize. The Quarian Engineer is a great supporting character. The sentry turret can be used to activate your cryoblasts as well as put distractions up. It can also provide an additional source of firepower. Incinerate and cryoblast work wonders together. Cryoblast for freezing the enemies, slowing their advance and putting debuffs on them, and incinerate for actually dealing the damage and activating the combinations that come with this class. So this has been the Quarian Engineer. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's been informative and that you maybe learned something. I've been Dartblade. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.